Hey there crewmates, how's it going? It's Miff Crew here, and today we are going to be looking at how to make a very basic walking animation in Source Filmmaker that is going to look something like this. Now before we get into this, I would quickly like to say that this tutorial is mainly looking at those who know the basics in Source Filmmaker of how to add a model, how to position a model, how to use keyframes, how to use the motion editor and the graph editor. So that's the type of people that this tutorial is mainly looking at here. But if you don't know those, then you could either watch a basic tutorial, I actually uh, made one, or you could, uh, you know, try and follow along anyways. Who knows, you might be able to achieve. Alright, now let's get right into the tutorial here. So here we have our model right here, and we are going to want to position him in a standing position to get started with. What we are going to do here is that we are going to go into the motion editor, and we are going to position the arms into a more of a standing pose simply by rotating them inwards with the rotating tool here. Uh, maybe a little bit more there. Seems about right. And now let's do the same with the other arm here. Now of course you can access these bones through either the viewport like right here or in the animation set editor like here where my mouse is. Alright, sweet! So now we have him in a standing position. Now most models should be good to go by now, but there might be some models out there who might have their legs in a position that might not be good for a standing position. So they might look something like this, let's say. You could just rotate, you could just position them yourself until it looks like a good standing position. But in this case, we won't be needing to. It seems to be at a good standing position by default here, by the first time it was imported into this project. All right, so now that we have him in his standing position here, you are going to want to make sure that you are at the point in the animation where you are liking to start walking. In this case, I would like him to start walking from the very beginning of the project here. And I am now going to head on over into the graph editor. Now that we are in the graph editor, we are going to want to select all of his bones. We can do that by clicking on the name of the model or clicking on the green cube next to the name of the model here. And as you can see, he now has all of his bones selected. Yes! So now that we have all of his bones selected, we are going to want to click M on the keyboard. And now that we have done that, that will make a keyframe here. Alright, sweet. So now that we've made our keyframe, let's take a look at where we would like him to walk to here. So he is standing here at the moment. And in this case, I would like him to walk from here all the way over to about here. Where my camera is sitting. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to play the animation for a little bit and then I'm going to pause it. And then after I've paused it, I'll make my keyframe and I'll move him to where I would like him to be. Play, 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 pause. Alright, cool. Now I'm going to make my keyframe. Now that I have made my keyframe, I'm going to want him to actually move forwards here. So what we are going to do here is that we are going to locate his root transform. It can usually be found in one of these sections in the animation set editor. In this case, it is underneath the body section, but of course every model is different. And it has the root transform right there. If you are struggling to find the root transform, you can go into the viewport and hold down control and you should see his root transform around here. But again, every model is different. Now that we have located his root transform, we are going to want to go into the move tool here. And now that we are in the move tool here, all we have to do is move him forward. Boom. Should be about there I'd say, maybe a little bit more forward there. If we were to go back to the previous keyframe, for those of you who don't know, I browse between these keyframes, like I am doing right now, through the square brackets on the keyboard, the left square bracket and the right square bracket. 
I can either play the animation with the play button right here, or I can hit the space bar button on my keyboard. So I'm going to hit the space bar button. And now if you were to play the animation back here, we can see that he is moving at a decent pace. One thing I'll quickly like to cover before moving on is that what speed he is going at is fully dependent on how far apart the two keyframes are from each other. If we were to go and drag this keyframe right here, that brings him all the way over from here to there. If we were to drag that closer, then he should go a lot faster. If we were to drag it further away, then it should go a lot slower. But in my case, I am happy the way it was when I paused it. So I'm going to control Z to undo until I get to the point where I was just now. So it's all well and good that we can have him moving and all. Does he have wheels on his feet or something? Like, he, how is he moving without moving? So what we are going to do here is that we are now going to move the arms and legs so it looks like he's actually walking instead of being on, I don't know, rollerblades or something like that. We are here at the model now and what we are going to want to do is that we are going to want to select all of the arm bones and the leg bones. For those of you who may not know how I did that, how I had them all selected, at the same time, I selected all the arm bones, which happens to be in this arm section right here. And then I held down control and left click on the leg bones. And that's how I did that. Not all arm bones and leg bones will be in their own section. So in which case you might have to locate all the arm bones and hold down control to select the specific ones that you would like here. If there is a row of bones that you would like to select that doesn't have any other bones in the way, then all we have to do is select the first bone and go to the bone that we would like to select, hold down shift and left click. However, this can sometimes lead to other bones being selected from my experience. So in which case, you'll just have to do it the long way. All right, now that we have all our arm bones selected and all of our leg bones selected here. All we have to do now is we are going to want to go to the keyframe that we just created that brings him over here. But when we delete this, we are going to have to make sure that we have the arm bones selected and the leg bones selected only. So with the arm bones and leg bones selected here, let's delete the keyframe that we have created. We can do that by left clicking on the keyframe, either clicking delete on our keyboard or right clicking on the keyframe and clicking delete key. The reason why we did that is because if we were to keep that keyframe in there for the arm bones and the leg bones, then as we're animating him, he will slowly be going back to the position that he is in right now really and for the time being we don't really want that position all right cool now that we have deleted that keyframe we're going to want to make sure that we are back at the point in the animation where we want him to start walking at and now we are going to want to play and pause so play and pause again making sure that there's not too much a uh, too big a gap or too small a gap between each keyframe and now with the leg bones and the arm bones selected here we are going to press M on the keyboard to make another keyframe. So now that we have done that, all we have to do now is rotate his leg outwards here. So we are going to grab this leg, uh, go onto the rotating tool. We are going to rotate this leg forwards here. And now that we have done that, we are going to go around to the other leg here. We are going to select it and we are going to rotate it backwards. And now we are going to, I want to go to the R next to the leg that is backwards and rotate it forwards. And we are going to want to go to the leg that is forward. And then we are going to want to go to the arm that is next to the leg that is forward. And then we are going to want to rotate it backwards. There we have it. If you were to play it back now, then we can see that he does a step forward. 
Now, there is one thing that I would like to quickly point out here. If we were to look at someone taking a step in real life, then we would notice that they are in a similar position to this. So what we're trying to do here is copy what people look like when they take a step in the real world. And now that we have done his first step forward, we are going to want to go back to the first keyframe here with the left square bracket, we are going to want to count the frames in between these two keyframes. And when I mean count the frames, I mean uh, keep on going one frame forward. So one, two, until we get to the keyframe that has him doing his first step. And we are going to want to count these keys, these keyframes. The reason why is that so that we can get an accurate gap in between this keyframe and the next keyframe that we are about to create here. Let's go back to the first keyframe and count the frames in between this keyframe and this keyframe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven frames between these two keyframes. I'd also like to quickly say that we are counting the frames here, not keyframes. The keyframes are what we animate with. The frames, the frames are every single point that the keyframes can go on. So now that we know that we have seven frames in between these two keyframes right here, we are going to want to select all of the arm bones right here, select all of the leg bones right here, and we are going to want to make sure that we are on the keyframe that has him doing a step forward here, and we are going to want to go forward another seven keyframes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we are going to want to create another keyframe. The reason why we are doing this is so that we can get the same gap in between the first keyframe and the second keyframe. And we would like to get the same amount of frames in between the second keyframe and the keyframe that we have just created here. So then it has an accurate speed when it's doing the walking animation. It doesn't have to be exactly the same amount of frames each time. It could be like six frames after this frame or eight frames after this frame. But for this tutorial, we are just going to have it as the same amount of frames, which is seven frames. So now that we have created this keyframe here, we're going to want to make sure that we are on it here, like my little cursor is down here. And we are going to want to do exactly what we just did with posing the walk animation. Just this time, we're going to want to swap them around. The leg that is backwards, we are going to want to rotate forwards here. And the leg that is forwards, which is this leg right here, not the leg that we just rotated forwards, we are going to want to rotate backwards. The arm that is backwards here, we are going to want to rotate forwards. And the arm that is forward, again, not the arm that we just rotated forwards here, we are going to want to Select the arm that was forwards to begin with, and we are going to want to rotate it backwards here. There he is in his second step, really, doing his second step forward. So if we were to play it back here, then he should be doing two steps forward. One, two. But he's still having wheels on the bottom of his feet. How is he moving? So what we are going to do now is that we can either do exactly what we have been doing, but that could take quite a lot of time, especially if it is a long walking animation. So what we are going to want to do here is that we are going to want to select all of the arm bones and the leg bones. And now that we have done that, we are going to want to go back to the first keyframe that has him doing his first step forward then we are going to want to go to the next keyframe which has him doing his second step forward and we are going to want to hold down control and left click on the keyframe that has him doing his second step now we should have both of these keyframes selected here now that we have we are going to hold down control and tap c we could either do that or right click on one of the keyframes that we have selected and click copy keys. This will put the keyframes on copy. Now that we have done that, from the keyframe that has him doing his second step here, we are going to want to go another seven frames forward. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, 
making sure that we have the all of the arm bones and all of the leg bones selected here we are going to want to either hold down control and tap v or right click and paste if you were to play it back now he is now doing four steps forward now we could just keep on pasting the keys here but that could take quite a while so what we are going to do is that we are going to go to the keyframe that has him doing his first step forward again making sure that we have all of the arm bones selected and the leg bones selected and we are going to left click on the keyframe that has him doing his first step forward then we are going to right square bracket all the way to the keyframe that has him doing his last step forward then we are going to want to hold down shift and then left click on the keyframe that has him doing his last step forward and now that we have done that we are going to want to hold down control and tap c and that will put it on copy if not we can just right click on it and click copy keys now that we have done that we are going to want to make sure that we are on the keyframe that has him doing his final step here and we are going to want to go forward another seven frames one two three four five six seven and now that we have done that we are going to want to right click and click paste keys or we can hold down control and tap v not only have he pasted more keys he is also doing more steps so we can just keep on repeating this progress this process until he stops moving forward really all right cool and now if we were to play it back there he is walking however he seems to still be walking after he stops moving forward now if you were to select the root transform bone here and go into the second keyframe on it and if we were to select all the arm bones again and the leg bones again and the keyframe in your animations for the arms and leg were in the middle of transitioning from one keyframe to another then what can we do in order to resolve this so what we're going to want to do is that we're going to want to make sure that we are on the same keyframe of the root transform where it stops where it's supposed to stop which in this case is the second keyframe for the root transform and now that we have done that we are going to the arm bones and the leg bones now that we have selected those we are going to want to make another keyframe by pressing the m key on our keyboard and now that we have done that we are going to want to delete all of the other keyframes after the keyframe that we have just created here and now all we have to do is position him in a standing position he is more or less there already to be honest all we have to do is rotate this forward slightly this leg forward only a few minor adjustments really maybe i can rotate this arm backwards here this arm seems okay actually so if you were to play it back now he stops when he's supposed to. If he were to play it, and stop. Now, before I end it off here, I'd like to quickly go through some issues that you may encounter. Now, there might be some situations where you do your walking animation, but when he goes from one step to another, just before he gets to the keyframe where he's supposed to do his step, it might suddenly snap into the position of the keyframe so it might be playing playing position playing playing position so for those of you who might be having trouble with that i am going to quickly show you how it's fixed one thing that works for me is that i count the frames so one two three four five six seven i go back to the previous keyframe which is the keyframe just before he takes his step i go forward one frame one and then making sure i have the leg bones and the arm bones selected here i right click on the keyframe that is going into that position and then i click cut key then what i do then is that i right click on the little timeline here and then i click paste keys and then i continue my count two three four five six seven again making sure that i have all the leg bones and the arm bones selected here i then drag the key by left click and holding so left click and hold and drag the key to where i would like it to be if you were to play it back now 
then that should be working just fine. But if that doesn't work for you for some reason, then here is another fix that works for me. I go to the previous keyframe, that is the keyframe just before he goes into his position. And then I go into the motion editor here, then press the M key on my keyboard. And then I go back into the graph editor here. And now that we are back into the graph editor, I then go into the keyframe that has his position where he's supposed to be, the position that he's supposed to be in. And then I go back into the motion editor again. I then click M on the keyboard. And then I press the left square bracket that goes to the left. And that will select the part between the two keyframes then. Now that we have done that, we are going to want to make sure that we have our leg bones and arm bones selected here. Now that we have those selected, we are then going to want to go where the ramp slider is. Left click and hold and then drag all the way to the right. And if you were to play it back now, then it should work. If that doesn't work like it did it with me recently for some reason, then there is actually another way to fix this. So if we were to go back to the keyframe, then we're basically repeating step one. So we go forward one frame, we make sure that we have the arm bones and leg bones selected here. We cut the key once again, we paste the key, and then we continue our count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we drag the keyframe to where it's supposed to be. And then that seems to work. I want clear it seems to snap a little bit there. <laughs> oh, SFM, what are we going to do with you? I'd also like to quickly say that it's great to finally get doing these tutorials again. And I was thinking if there's anything that you were struggling with on Source Filmmaker, if there was anything that you need help with, if there was anything that you need a tutorial on in Source Filmmaker, then do feel free to contact me, whether it's through Steam, Facebook, the comment section, anything really. And yes, and now that the tutorial itself is over here, here is a preview of an animation that I have been working on. And yeah, that's pretty much all for now, crewmates. Thank you for watching. It's Miff Crew here, and I'll be back with more videos coming soon. Goodbye, crewmates.